I just have to get this really janky setup set up, but we're gonna talk about editing today. First, let's get a photo in here. Um, I have a bunch already. You can do a, here, we'll do, we'll do a pretty standard Colorado photo, maroon bells. It is exposed properly and we're able to play around with the color a little bit. So, as you can see right off the bat, there's a lot of magenta in this. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go through and hit this little slider over here. Uh, it's our magenta and green slider. Uh, depending on what camera you shoot with, your photos will come out typically a little more green or a little more magenta. I always forget which, like Canon is typically more magenta and then Sony's a little more green or vice versa. One, one of the two right out of camera typically has that. Um, Mine's really magenta right here. I don't know what my white balance was set at, which is fine. So we're just gonna kind of bring those greens in a little bit, kind of balance that out. So now it looks pretty warm, but the ground and the background look pretty even. So I'm gonna cool it down just a little bit or warm it up, just kind of play around and see. I like when I warm it up, I'm bringing up a lot of those oranges, but I don't like that the sky is getting this kind of mucky gray. I like kind of the blues in the sky. So we're gonna just warm that up a little bit. You know, sometimes I'll go from top to bottom and do my exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. Uh, but sometimes I like to just go ahead and hit the auto button just to kind of see where the photo goes based on what the computer thinks it is properly exposed as. If you're seeing some of these blues popping up over here, that just means that the blacks are getting crushed. Uh, so if you print it, you won't actually have any color of any sort. It will just be black pixels. Not a big deal in uh, Instagram or TikTok or anything like that. A lot of that stuff doesn't really matter, but you do want to be mindful of it. Uh, so that's where you're peeking over there. But I don't mind where this is at. So we've got a little before, after, you know, I do that multiple times. Uh, it's the backslash button above your uh, enter button on MacBooks. Uh, but yeah, just backslash, forward slash, forward slash. Not the one around the question mark, it's the other one. Uh, so you do a little bit of before and after when you're in Lightroom Classic. Just kind of see where you're at. Um, it is very orange, so I am going to cool this down just a little bit more. I tend to edit very warm. Uh, I don't know why, that's just something that like my style naturally gives way to. Um, I am seeing that it is a little smoky in here, you know. I, I'm, as you edit more and more, you kind of start to see where haze is and where, you know, it just kind of has a little bit of a smoky look back up here. Uh, so I like to first add contrast. Uh, as you add contrast, you kind of like give some punch to the photo, but also what you're doing is you're uh, exacerbating, um, exaggerating highlights in the shadows. You're just making the highlights brighter and the shadows darker. That's what contrast is, is allowing those pixels to be pushed further in each direction, creating more of a punchy look. Um, and I edit more of a heavy handed look. That's not everyone's style, it doesn't have to be your style. So you gotta play around with that slider and see what you like. Bring the contrast down a bunch and we have this kind of like smoky hazy look. And then as you go down, you have this presence look. I don't know exactly why it's presence, but it, it overall it'll add a little bit more texture. You know, the clarity, it, it can go pretty heavy on these really quick. You know, you slide this clarity over and it's just like, obnoxious but it's not always the most practical thing to use so I tend to go a little bit lighter on it maybe I'll go between like anywhere from like 15 to like maybe 50 if I'm really pushing it with this one um, I think it lends way to 50 I'm gonna bring that contrast up because I did like that punchy look uh, so here we are we've got our before and after you know we're starting to put some life into this photo now that we have a little bit more of control with our colors and with our texture of the photo. Um, so with that texture, this is gonna kind of give way to like the little pebbles in the foreground. Uh, you're gonna see a little bit more of the tree lines. Um, you know, you can go a little bit lighter on both of these because when you upload to Instagram, it already adds a bunch of clarity to it. That's uh, something that the app does naturally. So sometimes there's certain people like Alan Polander, uh, great, great, editor just an amazing photographer in general he tends to bring his contrast down and uh, not contrast his clarity down so that when he posts it online the app adds the clarity that he dropped so it levels out a little bit um i keep a little bit of clarity in mind and still with a little bit of haze in there i do like to add a little bit of that d haze especially on cloudy days i like my clouds to like look rah, aggressive uh, that's super fun for me. Now, when you add the dehaze and contrast and clarity, you're adding a lot of those blacks that are getting blown out. Um, so I'm gonna bring up those blacks a little bit. 
So this is kind of like, you kind of go back and forth a bunch in here, but typically I will go from top to bottom uh, within my editing like uh, panels. So now that is your base editing panel. That's your contrast, exposure, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, clarity, texture, dehaze. That's in your first panel. Your second panel is your curves panel. Um, you can use this to do very fine, very gentle adjustments to colors in your shadows, colors in your highlights. You know, if, if you want to have some blues in the highlights of somebody's like skin, um, if you're looking to add maybe some more warmth in your shadows or cool in your shadows, typically shadows are a little bit cooler, but you know, it's style, it's whatever you want to make of it. So right here with this gray, white dot right here this controls all of the colors overall the whole exposure of the photo so typically you add one drop in the middle and then if you want to drop your shadows you pull those down adds a bunch of contrast it makes those shadows more contrast he adds more shadow to the shadows um, you don't have to do that um, if you are going to be going for kind of that like vintage you know smoky hazy look uh, it was very like film noir uh, you lift up those blacks and give it that like, I don't know. It's a very stylized look and it can be overdone. Um, some people do it very well. I found that that at first I did it a lot, uh, but now I tend to go for more of the realistic look, uh, but I don't necessarily like aim in that. When it's really dark, I will lift up my blacks a lot and give that kind of filmy, vintage -y look. You kind of see what's going on over here. You got that film vintage look going on. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll tap it up a little bit because it is dark over on that side of the photo. Um, so I will bring up the actual true blacks um, and bring those pixels just a little bit more into the gray scale. Uh, and that's what you're doing there. You want to be very gentle with all of the colors, you know, your RGB. Um, this, your red, green, blues. When you introduce a little bit of the RGB into that, you really have to be mindful because like going forward from there, you are going to have some issues uh, if you get a little too heavy handed on it. Uh, because this is maroon bells, I do want to introduce some more maroon into the photo, uh, but I don't want it to be the overarching color of the photo because that's the name of the mountain range is maroon bells. You can kind of think of the center of that box as your general focus point. If you want to generally add oranges, you want to generally add blues, generally add greens, cyan, you, you generally hit it in the middle and then you can go into your, this is your shadows, it's kind of like first quarter point. Um, you can, can add green into it, uh, you know, as you add the green, you start to see that you get this little S curve. It naturally kind of creates an S as you add a second point on there and pull that up and down. So whatever you do to your shadows, the opposite will happen to your highlights and vice versa. I know this is a lot, but don't worry about it. We'll get right through this photo together. Um, I'm gonna just level out the greens a little bit. So there's your before, there's your after so far. It's very warm, very tasty. It was kind of a cool morning, so I might even cool this down just a little bit more. Now that we're getting a little heavier into the editing, um, I like that. I don't want to lose too much of the oranges in the aspens that we have out there. Uh, that's that's a, a very prominent part of that region. Um, and then you get into your HSL slider. So there's a couple of ways you can go about it. You can hit your HSL and just show saturation, hue, and luminance, you can click those one at a time, or you can go through and hit all, and then you can scroll through your luminance, your saturation, and your hue. Right now, I typically, with cloudy days, and depending on how dramatic I want the sky to look, uh, how much punch I want it to have, uh, typically I will drop the luminance of the blues. It just gives a little bit more of this like, oof, to the photo, it, you know, it can be very dramatic it can look really emotional and very punchy um, but when you do that you definitely change kind of the intensity of the color uh, so with me typically I actually like almost always get rid of a lot of the blues in the saturation realm but when you got stormy clouds you know you don't see a lot of blue in the sky you might have a little bit so I drop the saturation to balance off that hue you typically play around with your blues and your teals and that adds you know some depth and some 
concentration to your subject when you're playing around with those colors like that. Super fun. Um, I'm not going to play around with the colors too much. I might, you know, you can drop the oranges and make those like look super dramatic, but there is a, I don't like to play around with these too much. Um, I will typically, if I'm feeling pretty moody, I'll drop the greens. Um, but we don't have a lot of greens in here. You can kind of see on this side of the frame You got some greens and on this side you got some not a big difference But I am gonna I'm gonna actually add a little bit more saturation in there just a touch uh, Just kind of give some life to it Shadows I usually go around to 211. That's kind of my style to 209 to 211 and add some blues in there But I'm not really liking where that's going here. You can kind of typically you focus on one shadow, you focus on your shadows, your highlights first, and then you kind of see where you end up at. Um, I have been enjoying adding green into my photos. I don't know if that's like a Kodak color or something, but it gives me a very like film feeling when I do that into my shadows, um, depending on the photo. So now that I've picked the hue that I've got, we have it set at 61 over here. Uh, I'm gonna drop the saturation and switch over to my highlights to see what I wanna do with the highlights. And then I'll just slide the hue slider and kind of see where I want those highlights to end up at. So since we're using green, we're going to go into a closer to a magenta, uh, you know, cyan, blue, that, that kind of area over here and kind of see where that plays out at. Um, let's, let's hit that magenta, drop the saturation, and then maybe we'll add both of those up just like an eighth of the way and just see where it goes. I'm gonna punch up a little bit more in the highlights. I don't really like how purple that looks. Um, pretty good on the green. So then what's nice is like once you hit a point where you've added your hue, you've added your saturation to your highlights and your shadows, you have this middle slider that helps you balance out like how intense each color is gonna be within that photo. I don't like how green this is, which is where I have my shadow set at. So I'm gonna pull it over to the right and add some magenta into the highlights. And that looks pretty good. I think that's you know, I would be fine maybe cropping this in and getting that printed right there. I'd be fine with that. With the luminance, uh, I'm gonna go back up here, maybe play around with these yellows a little bit, kind of bring some life into the photo. Maybe some of the oranges too. Too much, too much. That's good, I like that right there. That's pretty good. Really draws attention to that color. You know, that's a big part of fall in Colorado is those aspens blowing up. So you kind of want to draw attention to those. You can go through and add some sharpening on it. You've got this small panel that does some really like fine focus points on where the sharpening's kind of happening. So we'll click on this and I will you know, drag it around and just kind of see where I want the sharpening to really be happening at. Um, again, we've got so much going on on the right side of the frame with color. I'm going to kind of bring it in there. And so the amount, all this stuff is already set at 40, 1.0, 25, and 0% masking. Masking is essentially how much you're going to utilize that. You know, are you going to use 100% of masking? Are you going to mask the whole, every pixel? Are you going to try and sharpen that? Um, and sharpening can't make up for something out of focus. Unfortunately, you can't put something in focus that's out of focus. But this does help when you have something in focus and you kind of just want to give it a little bit more of a crisp look to the photo. Um, if you hit Alt or Option and then click the masking, you know, nothing is getting used here. The whole photo is white. As you introduce the masking, the parts that are turning black are the parts that are getting masked uh, and adding to that sharpening. And so you can, you can kind of play around with the intensity of that. And I'm not the best at using this. I, I kind of go to like 50% just to kind of see where we're at. This looks good. Um, it's pretty dark overall, but that's okay. Something I always forget to do right off the bat is hit remove chromatic aberration. And typically when you hit enable profile correction, uh, it's just gonna allow some of the, the convex or concave of your lens to uh, be flattened out so you don't have any curvature in it. Not 100% accurate, but it typically will change the exposure if you're shooting at a low aperture, a low f-stop, shallow depth of field, where you have that big vignetting around the photo. Uh, you click that and the whole photo is a different um, exposure. So when I shoot, I don't really play around with profile correction because when I'm shooting with a lens, I want the lens's personality to be involved in the photo. So, you know, you can kind of judge that on your own. Uh, but as you do that, it kind of pulls the vignetting out of the photo 
and brings the uh, the edges flat again instead of having some curvature where you see right there you see how it kind of punches in a little bit and then pulls back and drops that brings that vignetting back so I like the vignetting on this lens so I'm gonna keep it right there uh, this was shot on a 24 to 70 lens I believe no, this was on my 15 to 30, so this is a wide angle lens, but it's it's shot at 29 millimeters, uh, f8 and two and a half seconds. Um, yeah, we'll leave that there. I, I, I'm gonna keep the keep the lens as it is. Uh, this whole transform area, I don't do this very often. You can do some weird stuff, like it's very specific to like, you know, what what's going on in your photo. I typically try not to play around with this too much. But if you need to, you can hit level and sometimes it'll automatically level the photo for you. As you can see, I, I leveled this already, so skip over that. You've got your highlight priority, which is essentially just your vignetting. Uh, if you're going to add vignetting into your photo, uh, if you find that there's too much vignetting and your enable profile correction is still not taking out that lens vignetting that happens with each lens has its own like intensity of vignetting, uh, you can negate it by adding white in there. It's not a very good when you go that way. Uh, it's not a really like good accurate representation of it. It you know this is like it looks like a you know for me this looks like a shitty postcard I would buy uh, but you can add in vignetting and kind of draw the attention of the viewer into the center of the photo uh, but the drawback to this is that you only get to do the center of the photo as your focus point uh, you can play around with the midpoint the roundness and the feather um, let's see if you can kind of see so this is where like you can change your feather like how hard that edge is gonna be if you hit alt or option uh, depending on if your MacBook or PC, you can kind of thin out how intense that's going to be. Uh, you know, it's at 50% typically right off the bat. And then you can change like if it's going to be more vertical or more horizontal right around the edges. I don't really play around with this much. You get like this old film look when you do that. Um, you can drop that down and get this like really old style like 8mm vignetting. Um, just double click the sliders if you don't like what you're doing there. Um, and it'll bring it back to the original uh, position point. You don't have to worry about having to slide it over, or press zero, just double click it and you're good to go. Um, this is my favorite portion of Lightroom, uh, is the shadows section. Uh, you get very subtle uh, adjustments depending on how you're editing your colors. Right here, we're gonna go through and play around with the shadow and typically I immediately go down to the blue and slide the blue to the left just to see where it goes. So you bring that over to the left and you just kind of keep going and you start to see that the photo is it's changing its personality a little bit. You got, you got this deeper teal in the sky. It's a very subtle teal. Um, there's your before, there's your after, adding a little bit more of those punch uh, oranges into your yellows and, and adding a little bit more of like a red tint to your oranges. So red and blue will offset each other. So you can kind of think about balancing out colors if you're like, I like the intensity of this but it's a little too intense. Um, with blue, you know, you go to the other side of the color scale and you hit red, you just drag the red in the opposite direction. So I'm gonna slide this red slider to the right to kind of offset that, and it introduces a little bit more of those yellows back, balances out those reds and those, those orange tints. Very fine tuning, very fine tuning, very useful. And you can add intensity of the saturation to it, or you can remove um, very color specific saturations um, I did like adding a little bit more saturation right there you know I think that looks you know that's that's wild looking it's starting to look crazy compared to where we started and you know that we've only been doing this for probably 10 10 15 minutes maybe but you know I would be right off the bat right there be totally fine sending that off to a client or you know getting this printed um, I don't like necessarily how intense the tint of the sky is that blue tint uh, so I'm going to, I, if you go left, you add more of that teal. I'm gonna go to the right and introduce some more of that magenta. We're in Maroon Bell, so you kinda want that color in there. Um, again, not big on the saturation of blues, so I'm gonna pull that back a little bit. Don't want the attention to be taken away too much from the center point of the photo. So now we've we've got the, got the magenta in there. Um, 
Greens are, for some reason, for me, a very hard color to play with effectively. But I will touch up, I use green to kind of fine tune what I've done with the reds and the blues. Um, in the RGB, it's kind of right in the middle, so you kind of get a fine tune with your greens. Um, and I don't, I actually don't like how maroon this photo is, how magenta it is. So I am going to introduce those greens in the shadows. And just see how that looks. It's a very subtle difference, but there we go. I think we got a good before and after. I am satisfied with that. Uh, I hope this helped you guys out to be a little bit more, you know, less apprehensive to using Lightroom. It's a really fun program, and I fucking love it. Um, so, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for being here. Here's the final photo.